Okay, let's open up in prayer. Lord, we want to say thank you one more time for letting us come together, Lord. We know you are in our presence. Now we ask you, Lord, that word it be for us, that we could comprehend it, and we could follow your will, not our will, Lord, that we could stand strong on it. We ask this in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week's Amen. lesson, we're coming, um, it's going to be First King, for chapter 8. We could continue chapter 8. Um, as you can see, the first page is honoring God, mm. and and it's all four lessons are coming from First King. So we're going to try to focus just on chap, uh, chapter 8, verses 14 to 21 for this lesson. And the next okay. lesson will be 22 to 30. I know some of the stuff is going to run over. So that's why I put the lesson outline on the first page. But this week, last week, we finished Solomon Sums the Ark. This week, we talked about Solomon Speaks to the People. Okay. Correct. And we're going to go First King chapter 8, verses 14 to 21. And the reference also is Second Chronicle chapter six. So okay, do you want to read the introduction? Yes, we're going to read all that, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Go so ahead, the introduction, can... the introduction, uh, a part of it, uh, it, it, uh, it says, because he said he would, when asked to give a eulogy at his father's funeral. A young man named Alex Sheen decided to honor his dad by uh, com commemorating him as one who always kept his word. Sheen distributed promise cards with the words, because I said I would, written in the, in the corner. He asked people to write promises on the cards and then to hand the cards to those to whom they made the promises. The persons making the promises would get the card back once they had fulfilled their word. Shin then offered to send free cards to anyone who asked, no matter where they live. Word got out. Uh, within 18 months, Shin had kept his promise and sent out more than 250,000 cards. This promise led to his establishment of the nonprofit organization um, called uh, Because I Said I Would. Since 20, 2013, the organization has provided over 8 million promise cards. This week's text focuses on words Solomon uh, spoke at the dedication of the temple. Those words highlighted promises made and kept. Because God said he would, he did. I like, I like today uh, because it's talking more about God's faithfulness. And, and you, can be, you cannot exhaust the topic of God's faithfulness. That's that's true. Okay. Go, okay. Do you ahead, want to go ahead and continue to do the lessons contents if you don't mind? Okay, lessons content. Um, the faithful God of Israel has established David's son Solomon on the throne of Israel, and that's in First King two twelve. God then enabled Solomon to complete the project his father had given him to build a house of worship for the Lord. First Chronicles 22, 6 through 13. First Kings 8, 1 through 13, last week's lesson, recounted the opening scenes of the dedication ceremony for the grand temple Solomon had built in Jerusalem for the God of Israel, lesson six. Mm -hmm. Today's account continues to examine that ceremony. A parallel account can be found in 2 uh, Chronicles 6, 3 to 11. So this week... Okay, so do, you want, do, you, do you want to read the first Kings 8, 14 through 21 um, out of King James's, and I will read it out of NIV. Okay. I, isn't that the one I have on the board, NIV? I Let me see. Let's see. Yeah, that's the NIV on the board. Yeah. So. Let me see. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, you're right. It's an IV. Okay, so do you want to? Um, all right, you can read the NIV off the board since we said we're going to do that one. And you want me to read the King so James? So we don't need to read the King James. Is that what you're saying? Right. I, I mean, I put the NIV because yeah. everybody said that was more easier to read. So that's why to we read. that one on the board. Yeah, it is, it is easier to read. So let me read uh, 1 Kings 8 14 to 21 out of the NIV. While the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them. Then he said, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who with his own hand has fulfilled what he promised with his own mouth to my father, David. For he said, since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city in any tribe of Israel to have a temple built so that my name might be there. But I have chosen David to rule my people Israel. My, my father David had it in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father, David, you did well to have it in your heart to build a temple for my name. Nevertheless, you are not the one to build the temple, but your son, your own flesh and blood. He is the one who will build the temple for my name. The Lord has kept the promise he made. I have succeeded David, my father, and now I sit on the throne of Israel just as the Lord promised. And I have built the temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. I have provided a place there for the ark in which is the covenant of the Lord that he made with our, with our ancestors when he brought them out of Egypt. Okay. Again, we're going to pick up from what we left last week. Like I said, we did the building of the ark. Now we're going to do strictly Solomon speaking to the people. Okay. So this week is strictly Solomon speaks to the people. I know you know this whole chapter by heart. So that's why I keep saying it's speaking yeah. to the people. <laughs> so we spoke, we spoke, it. this lesson, we're going to focus on Solomon speaking to the people. All right. So the first questions we have. Um, and like we said, there's really no wrong answer. You know, everybody interprets it different. So let's, the first question is, while the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them. The first question said, what was King Solomon doing that he had to turn around? Okay. There, uh, there's so much in, in, in that is missing in uh, false kings that is contained in Second Chronicles 6. Do you want to attempt to read Second Chronicles 6 and those questions will answer themselves. Okay, Second Chronicles six. So we'll go ahead and um, go Second Chronicles six. Yeah, Second Chronicles six, and I believe it's, it's eleven. Uh, sorry, three to eleven. Three to eleven. I, I can start from one three to eleven anyway. One. So Second Chronicles six one through eleven. This is the prayer prayed by Solomon. On, I'm reading out of the Living Bible. This is okay. the prayer prayed by Solomon on that occasion. The Lord has said he would live in the, in the thick darkness, but I have made a temple for you, O Lord, to live in forever. Then the Lord turned around to the people and, and they stood to this. Uh, the, then the king, sorry. Then the yeah. king turned around to the people and they stood to receive his blessing. Um, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, he said to them, the, the God who talked personally to my father, David, and ha has now fulfilled the promise he made to him. For he told him, I have never before, since bringing my people from the land of Egypt, chosen a city anywhere in Israel as the location of my temple where my name will be glorified. 
and never before have I chosen a king for my people Israel. But now I have chosen Jerusalem as the as the city, and David as the king. My father David wanted to build this temple, but the Lord said not to. The Lord said not to. It was good to have the desire the Lord told him, but he was not the one to build it. His son was chosen for that task. And now the Lord has done what he promised. For I have become king in my father's place and I have built the uh, temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel and placed the ark there. And in the ark is the covenant between the Lord and his people. Okay, so so it was a good thing I started from verse one because it tells you that the, um, Solomon was praying to God. It says, this is the prayer Solomon prayed. And uh, he was talking to God and then he turned around to the people. So that, that's, you see how that answered that question already. Yeah, and, and that's what, you know, and when we were reading last week's, we noticed that the cloud came in, so the presence of God came in. So we, we identified this last week too, you know, Solomon was giving reverence also, you know, to the God because at this time, God's presence in the temple. So he's pleased with what he has done. And we identify that, like I said, last week. So, okay. Um, where, why were did the, okay? Then this, why were the, sorry, why were the Israelites standing there? It should have been why were the Israelites standing there? I apologize for the grammar, incorrect grammar on that question. Well, the the Israel the Israelites seem to have been sitting while while Solomon was praying to God. And then when the king turned around to the people, it says they stood up to receive his blessing. So they were there, they were there sitting, uh, watching him dedicate the temple with all the prayers and all the offerings and all the, uh, what he was doing. And then when he had completed that, he turned around to the people and they all stood up to receive his blessing. The question I have inherent to that is um, why did it fall uh, uh, to uh, what, why, what does it mean receive his blessing and why was the king authorized to give the blessing? Because from my from reading is because God had chosen Solomon. Solomon was his chosen in the, at this time, you know, he was his, basically like Moses. Moses was the chosen one. Solomon was the chosen one at this point. He had, he yeah. had and I'm not going to keep going, go into it because I think further in the questions, it says something pertaining to that. So, um, but that's from my perception, you know, Moses was chosen. Abraham was chosen. Jacob was chosen. Solomon was chosen. So Solomon at this point was his intermediate person. He had a direct communication with Solomon. What do you say? Okay. Um, in, before all of this happened, before all of this, um, you know that Solomon was sacrificing all the all the. Uh, the offerings and uh, in, in in Second Chronicles five, it says that um, um, uh, when they had offered the uh, the sacrifices and when they had praised, all praising and thanking God, uh, saying the, uh, He is good, His loving kindness lasts forever. Right. At that moment, the glory of the Lord coming as a bright cloud filled the temple so that the priests could not continue their work. So, um, and at this, all this while, when this was happening, this was happening in, uh, in, the, in the holy place, okay? 
Right. They were mm -hmm. in they, they, they were uh, in the holies of holies. They were in the holy place. The people were in the outer co courts. Okay. The people were in the outer courts. So Solomon and the priest were part of beholding the presence of, of God. Right. They were part of um, um, uh, be, uh, experiencing the presence of God. When you are in the presence of God, there is, there is fullness of joy. There is uh, pleasures forevermore. There is blessing abounding. That is why when the high priest goes into the holies of holies, when he offers the incense in the holy place, he comes out of the temple and he blesses the people. He passes it on. He passes on the, the, uh, the blessing of having been in the presence of God. And, um, and the same thing with, with Solomon. He was part of all the what the priests were doing. He was he, uh, the glory of the Lord had just come and filled the uh, the the temple, which means the holy place, the the um, the Presence holies of, of holies, and and so he had just experienced that, uh, and he could have been the high priest that did the blessing, but because anybody that experiences the presence of the Lord can come out and pass it on. Mm -hmm. Typically in all the festivals of Israel, uh, especially in the Yom Kippur, in the uh, atonement, it's the high priest that comes out and blesses the people. Mm -hmm. um, when they say bless, it just means pass on what the Lord has given you, which is his presence has given you, pass it on to the rest of the congregation. And so that is what they're doing here. That is what, um, that is what, um, Solomon is doing here. He's turning around and he's passing on the blessing of the of the Lord. And um, so, I, I mean, Solomon was anointed to for this task, and you right. uh, is not so much inherent in himself right. because of what he's doing. And we'll, and we'll continue that question that answer on b because b says um verse 15 a says um then he said praise be to the lord the god of israel who with his own hand has fulfilled what he promised with his own mouth to my father david for he said the question was what was the purpose of recapping which solomon gave to the people about the history of this project why did he do the recap And I love I love that question because he 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 this is actually a way of speaking for the Jews, but it also helps you remember um, why they're there. They're mm -hmm. there to dedicate a temple that um, the Lord that David wanted to build, and the Lord has said your son will be built. Okay, mm -hmm. and when God speaks. God's words have a, a, uh, an immediate fulfillment and a long-term fulfillment. An immediate fulfillment is what they have, they're experiencing now, which is the building of the, of the temple, the physical temple, uh, the temple made of stone, timber, and ornate um, um, materials like silver and gold and precious stones. That is the immediate fulfillment of that word, your son of that promise, your son, uh, your son will build me a temple. Um, but there is a, a far uh, um, prophetic fulfillment of that same um, word, of that same promise that had not been realized yet. While well, Solomon didn't see that, um, but he, he only saw the near fulfillment, but there were there is a building of the temple that God was referring to also uh, that was fulfilled uh, at, um, at the cross of Christ. So, right. so the son that was promised to build the temple is Solomon, but of, of course Solomon is just a type of 
the Messiah, who is the the, the Son of God that would be uh, that would build the temple. Because yeah, we you have know, the physical. The, again, we're going to identify it so whoever's listening to the videos understand that we're talking about two. At this time, the Israelites had a physical building. We're talking about the yes. temple that the ark actually go. And what you're talking about is the current temple, which we live by. Yeah, yeah. So and that, so the, the physical temple, the physical temple, which Solomon was dedicating right now, um, um, it, 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 it's the temple for his name. The temple for his name, uh, and uh, and it it says uh, when when God says temple for my name, it means a a, um, a place where my name will be glorified, or where I will glorify my name. Um, and so when the 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 physical building um, is was a place is a place where his uh, God's name will be glorified, God's um, attributes will be glorified, God's renown will be glorified, and God's presence will be glorified. Mm -hmm. And so that was what was happening back then. Now in um, in today's in today's um, um, day and age, um, the temple is not stone, timber, gold, silver, or precious stones. Now, today, the temple is the people of God. And we can get that in First Chronicle, First Corinthians 3.16 and First Corinthians 6.19. If we want to go there real fast. Okay. Do we want to recap those when we go to the verse 17 further down? Okay. Okay. Let's, okay, let's, we're, let's talking, do that. Uh, we're talking about because um, verse 19 talks about um, your own flesh and blood. Um, what was the house built for? So we could go put those in verse 19. Verse 19. We'll put it there. Let me recap. So I don't want to. I mean, some of the stuff we've already touched base, and that's why I said I want to just, I know you know it, and I know you're excited. This was a really good lesson. So let's mm -hmm. go. Um, on this lesson, we're, spoken, we're focusing on Solomon speaking to the people. So here first, um, what was the purpose of the recap? We identify that, right? We identify mm -hmm. he wanted, um, he's saying on this question, Solomon's reminding him, this was promised back when my father, King David, was trying to build my house. And it has come to fruition right now. So that's the first thing that God has spoken of. And it has come to full fruition. Verse 16 says, uh, Since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city in the tribe of Israel to have a temple built, so that my name might be there. But I have chosen David to rule my people Israel. Okay. Again, Solomon's recapping. And it says, how long has it been since the Israelites were brought out of Egypt? That was the question. It was just a uh, throw out their question. Okay, do we want to go to 1 Kings um, 6, 1 to find yes. out that answer? Okay. Yes, Okay. Please. 1 Kings 6. Sorry, I don't have it open, so I have to. Okay. You got it, or do you want me to read it? And 480 years after the Israelites came to the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the second month of Zib, he began to, he began to build the house. house. He began um, because um, he didn't finish the house of the Lord for. I believe it was some, uh, seven years, years or is it 10 years? Yeah, 10 years. 13, 13 years I thought the, um, took to build the house. Yeah. I think it's 13. So again, David's, um, Solomon's recapping 
the Israelites at this time, it was 480 years that there was not a physical building. And we identified this before the, the tent was moved. It was portable, right? So wherever the Israelites yeah, went, the, tent, tabernacle. the tabernacle went. So it was, it was a portable tent versus now he has a physical building. And Solomon again is saying, hey, I'm reminding you guys, you know, the Israelites, you've been in, captured, you know, you were in Egypt. It took you 480 years to get out of here. Okay. And then he's the second question it says, is there any significant on not chosen or has chosen? And the question was referencing to that verse. It says, I have not chosen a city in any tribe. And then he goes to 16D. It says, but I have chosen David. Was there any significant in there? And I find it interesting when God, when you read the word of God, he puts in words so we could realize that he is speaking. And that's why I put those two questions, that thing in there, not chosen, half chosen. And I know you know the answer. Yeah, there, there is significance in, in the fact that he was um, recollecting all the history because um, it, give, it, it, it it shows um, that when God speaks, God uh, makes it happen. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that uh, David gave, um, that Solomon gave praise to God for keeping the promise because he could easily have given the, uh, the credit to himself mm -hmm. and say, oh, I have kept the promise of the Lord. No, mm -mm. he said God himself by his own hands have, has kept the promise of building the temple. Um, I, in, I, like in, I like that, I like that because um, he understood. He understood that God allowing him to build the temple is is an act of grace. Mm -hmm. um, God allowing him to build the temple. God allowing us to wake up in this morning is an act of grace. God allowing us to go to work is an act of grace. God allowing us to uh, to earn a paycheck is an act of grace. Because we know when God doesn't allow you to, to do it, you, you, it will not get done. Um, God did not allow David to build the temple. It did not get done in David's lifetime. Right. And if God did not allow him to build the temple, it would not have happened in even in Solomon's time. I, I love the way you answer that because that is so important that we realize, like you said, if God doesn't allow it, it's not going to happen. You yeah. know, you know, like we identified earlier, you know, King David wanted to build the temple. God said, no, 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 that's not what I want. You're not doing it. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, to so and then, you know, King David was anointed because the people asked for king, you know, so they got Solomon. But then God chose David to lead the Israelites. So, again, it was a choice that God had made, not man. Because man had no control. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I like the way you said that, you know, if, if God doesn't want it to happen, it's not going to happen. No matter what we try, it's it's not going to happen. And so I thought that was a question that we need to understand. You know, everybody says we have choices, but the bottom line is it's always God's will that's going yeah. to fully, fully yeah. come out. It's not your own will. So that's why I threw that question out there. Verse 17, and then we'll go to your big verse 19. <laughs> okay. Verse 17 says, My father had it in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, You did well to have it in your heart to build the temple for my name. Six says, David was a man of blank. Seven says, Why was David not allowed to build the temple? And we've, I basically answered these questions already. Okay, we said David was a man of God, you know, heart. 
the Lord. And then uh, why was David not allowed? Because we said it wasn't his choice. It was uh, the Lord. The reason, the, and I, I, I didn't I didn't have the reference that it was in the, I think not in this uh, last one, but the, the Bible study before the last. Um, the way that David understood it is that um, the reason why God didn't want him to build the temple was that he was a man of war and mm -hmm. that he uh, he had shed much blood okay um that's how david understood it that's how uh, when when the prophet um uh, came to him and said uh, god came to him and said don't do this uh, the lord said your son will do it that's what he got out of it yeah but if if you notice that even the wars that David uh, uh, fought, God says he fought those wars. It was right. that, that God himself fought those wars, wars for David. So it wasn't so much as, um, uh, as the wars themselves that, uh, that, um, or that David did something wrong in fighting those wars. Um, it was because David was just occupied, uh, the, the, the child David wars and, and, and claim territory and claim all the territory God had given Israel. And so, and that task was, God knew was going to fill up all his lifetime and that he wasn't going to, he, God didn't want David distracted with building a, a building when the task at hand that God had given David was to fight the wars and, and claim all the land that God had already given the, the children of Israel. And so uh, he, he, David did the charge that was given to him and completed it. And he, when he had completed it, that's why Solomon was able to have peace all around because all the land that, that God had given, uh, uh, God had showed Moses and God had given the children of Israel now hands of Israel and so it wasn't so much of uh, and, and I know in the, in the scripture says uh, David thought uh, because he was a man of war and there was right. so much blood on his hands um, and that was why he couldn't build the temple that's what David taught and God uh, and the Bible writes it down accurately. That's what, it, that's what, it, but you will notice that's not what God said at all. And if you read exactly what God said, um, God didn't talk about blood on any hands. God talks about the fact that it's, uh, he, he was, he was to wage the war and he was to complete the wars. So, all right. So we identified that, and again, thank you for the recap. We've identified that a couple of weeks ago. I remember that, but thanks for the recap on that one. All right. I said we could do it in 19, but I think we're going to go to 24 because the 20 is actually what the promise and the covenant. So what? We'll go back to those. Your question in verses 20. So 19 says. Nevertheless, you are not the one to build the temple, but your son, your own flesh and blood. He is the one who will build the temple for my name. What was the house built for? And will you just identify this earlier when you were answering the questions before? Yeah, the, the, the house or the temple is built for the name of God. That means for his glory. Um, and... Um, for his glory uh, to be attached to that, to that building that they were building uh, meant three things. Uh, it meant that the uh, presence, the tangible presence of the Lord will be there. Okay. It meant that the covenant of the people uh, of the Lord uh, of the Lord, be the covenant between the people and the Lord will be there. That's the that's the Ten Commandments, which was a covenant between God and the uh, and the Israelites, and it uh, and it meant that the Ark of the Lord will be there, and the Ark of the Lord uh, signifies uh, several things. The Ark of the Lord 
signifies the, uh, the whole system of atonement that God gave Israelites, or the Israelites back then. So it's a, it's a, it's a uh, right, left, punch thing. So when, the, when you talk about the, the Ten Commandments, which is the law, God did not give just the law, but gave the atonement with the law. Because otherwise, the law would have destroyed all of Israel if there wasn't the atonement with it. And so the atonement was a sacrificial system. The, the killing, the, the five offerings, the peace offering, the sin offering, the bond offering, fellowship offering, and uh, all that, those offerings was a system of atonement. And, and, uh, and that, all, all that, that blood um, atonement was put right in, in the presence or in the, uh, right in the eyesight of, of the presence of the Lord by the, by the high priest once a month when he sprinkles the mercy seat, when he sprinkles the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. So um, that uh, so, well, temple not, for his well, name. All right, so well, the house was built, because we're going into 22. Um, so we already know it's, it's a physical building for them to make sacrificial offers for the to the Lord. Yes. So, so in verse. So, yeah. So, I like the way you, I like the way you said it. It's it's the presence, uh, a temple for His name. Uh, the house was built for as a temple for His name, and that meant uh, a tangible pr uh, place for the presence of the Lord to be. Mm -hmm. That meant the record location for the covenant of the Lord, and that meant the. Um, the place for the offerings, the place for the uh, um, for all the sacrifices to be made. All right, don't go no further than that. I know you want to go really further, Matt. <laughs> In verse twenty, this is the recap. Now, verse twenty, you can answer all the other stuff. It says the Lord had kept the promise He made. I have succeeded David, my father, and now I sit at the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised. And I have kept, I have built the temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. I have placed a place, I have provided a place for there for the ark in which the covenant of the Lord that he made with our ancestors when he brought them out of Egypt. The question says, what promise? And the second question, what covenant? And what are the three elements of the Sinaitic or the Mosaic covenant? And I know you know them all. Okay. So, so, the, <laughs> so the, 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 the promise. This, this is the, the promise of rest. This is the promise that after the wars have uh, the uh, wars are completed, that, which is why David wasn't to build the temple. After the wars are completed and the, and the territory of Israel is established and there's peace all around the territory of Israel, Solomon will come and will build the temple. Uh, and this is our promise, and is uh, and, and, and God is now fulfilling the promise uh, after the territory of Israel has been firmly established. Now they can um, have uh, a place of worship, a place of worship, and this is that promise being fulfilled for Israel in the physical, in the physical. So that is the. That is the uh, the promise. Um, uh, let's read Genesis 17. I didn't. Uh, sorry, I I didn't finish, I didn't write all this um, down. Uh, I didn't pull them up. That's okay. um, so let's read Genesis 17 verses four and then 17, four. Yes. And then seven through nine. It's still chapter four. I mean 17. Talking okay. about the promise to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Okay. 17. 17. And Exodus, right? Yeah, Exodus 16. Uh, 6. Wait. 6. 
Okay. Amplified. Okay. Okay, so this is this is the um, the you went back. Okay, so the, the promise uh, that God made Abraham that the whole covenant comes with you, and you shall be the father of many nations. So, uh, and then it says in seventeen seven nine, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. Um, throughout their generations for an everlasting solemn pledge to be a God to you and to your posterity after you. Mm -hmm. And I will give you and to your posterity after you the land in which you are a stranger going from place to place, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my co my covenant, and you and your descendants after you, throughout their generations. Mm -hmm. And then let's go to Exodus six, um, six to eight. According to according uh, say to the Israelites, I'm the Lord, and I will bring you out of the, from underneath the burdens of Egypt, and I will free you from their bondage. And I will see you with an outstretched arm, with special and vigorous action, and, I will, and by mighty act of judgment. And I will take you to, to me as a, for a people, and I will be to you a God. And you shall know that is the Lord your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land concerning which I lifted up my hand and swore that I would give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you for a heritage. I am the Lord. Do you have the pledge of my, of my changeless, omnipotent, omnipotent faithfulness? So God promised uh, Israel the land. And David completed and established the boundaries of the land of Israel. Now that God had given them the land, God was giving, uh, was giving them his permanent presence in, uh, in the middle of the land in a temple. That's right. And, and, and so the promise, the promise was the land, uh, was the land of that uh, from a, to uh, to Abraham and his descendant, uh, Isaac Jacob is to have land uh, that they can that they would uh, they will be a nation nation unto him in, and that's what was been for, uh, what what was already fulfilled with David when he established boundaries of. And I what I like the body too that God has at this point when we're reading back in Exodus and Genesis God had already told him I'm gonna be your God you know he mm -hmm. knew that they were gonna you know we're talking about an era and it's still an era now where the Israelites were tempted with all these other gods that were around them you know as when they were in Egypt as you remember with the Pharaoh Pharaoh kept saying you know they said could your God do this you know and Moses kept saying yes my God could do this you know, could your God do this? You know, it was always, and, and like I said, I love the way he says, I'm going to be your God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the, it, so now let's go to the covenant. Oh, I let's knew you were ready covenant. for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were ready for that one. <laughs> All right. All right, go ahead. And, and the, oh, I don't think I have the right scriptures. <laughs> go ahead. Now, the, the covenant to Abraham is not exactly the same as the covenant to the children of Israel. The, the covenant to, uh, to the children of Israel, especially the Mosaic uh, uh, Sinai covenant, is uh, the first covenant to the children of Israel. The covenant of Abraham is a covenant of grace. The, the promise to Abraham is a promise to, uh, it's, 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 it goes further than just the land. 
the first one, the first promise to Abraham is, um, is the land. God says, uh, I want you to go to a land I will show you and, uh, and, and I will give you that land. That was why Abraham uh, left uh, Ur and went to Canaan and because of that promise. So the first promise is a land. The second promise, however, is a promise that God says, through you, through your seed, the promise of the seed, uh, and through your seed, all of creation will be blessed. So the, and, and, uh, and in, through that uh, seed uh, is, is the foretelling of the second covenant. The second covenant, which is gov uh, which is totally by grace. So grace preceded the law, even though we're in, in the uh, the covenant of grace right now. The covenant, the, the 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 covenant that God made with Abraham is is a, a covenant of grace that says, through you, through your seed, all of creation will be blessed, and uh, and that blessing is a uh, righteousness by faith. That's why it says Abraham is the, um, sorry. It's just um, Telemachus. Uh, so the, 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 the second promise, and I, I'll, 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 uh, I don't have it, I don't have the reference right now, is the promise uh, uh, that um, right, uh, that righteousness by faith because Abraham was the first one to be declared righteous by God or because he believed God he says Abraham believed God and it was ascribed or uh, as, uh, it was credited to him as righteousness okay and that promise that that righteousness by faith will be to all people was Promised through the seed of Abraham, which is who, who is who is Christ, is right. not multiple seeds. It's the seed singular of right. Abraham, which is who is Christ. And and so there is that there is that that covenant also with with Abraham, a covenant of um, um, righteousness by faith. Um, but before righteousness by faith could come into fruition, um, God made a covenant with the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the law. God made uh, the covenant, uh, uh, the covenant of the law, which is the first covenant uh, with the children of Israel um, uh, on Mount Sinai. And that is, and the 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 three uh, of the first moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says uh, fulfill this Ten Commandments, uh, and uh, you would you would um, be uh, it's like ten percent of the rest because you know Ten Commandments is inadequate. The Ten Commandments doesn't cover everything. I mean, you you can still be evil and technically keep the Ten Commandments and still uh, do something bad that is not on the Ten Commandments. So, 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 but the Ten Commandments was a ten percent of the standards of God. The Ten Commandments was if you fulfill this Ten Commandments, if you fulfilled all of them. Uh, uh, I would, uh, God says, I would deem it as if you have fulfilled all my requirements. Okay, just like in the beginning, in in the in the Garden of Eden, of Eden God says, um, don't eat of this tree, which is just one command. Uh, if you don't eat of this tree, I would deem it as if you have fulfilled all my requirements. And, and but you can you know that. In the Garden of Israel, they could not have eaten from the tree, but they could have killed each other, each other, and <laughs> and that would not that would not be fulfilling the uh, the righteousness of God, right? Right. 
But but God uses this uh, this uh, the moral law to set his standards, and God knew that man could not. And God says, if you fail in one of this Ten Commandments, I don't grade, I, God doesn't grade on the scale. If you fail in one, you fail all. You fail in all. So, because it's the same thing that says, do not commit adultery, that says, not commit adultery, but if you covet, it's as if you have committed adultery. You say, it's, it's you, you are rebelling against the, the voice of the Lord. Okay. So, that God knew that they could not. That's why the, it says the, the the law wasn't the law wasn't given uh, so that uh, uh, righteousness can prevail. No, the law was given so that the sin may uh, abound. That means sin may be made glaring, so that people would know that 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 they don't have in themselves they don't have the power to measure up. Sin is called falling short and the problem with uh with human beings is that in our soul strength in our strength internal strength we do not have the uh, uh, enough strength to uh consistently and uh, always stand against evil and we do not have the strength we fall short of the strength to the level of good god wants and so it is that inadequate in inner strength that is called sin. It's that inadequate inner strength is called falling short. Right. And God knew that we 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 could not um, come to His standard. That is why one element of the of the of the covenant was the law. The other element of the covenant was the atonement of the sacrificial system the sacrificial system. And the sacrificial system did not cleanse sin. The sacrificial system just covered over the sin of the people. The sacrificial system just said, we do not have enough strength to meet standards, but we, you have given us a way. It's like a credit card. You know, when you pay with your credit card at the store, you still haven't paid for that thing. Right. They let you take the goods and they let you to they let you be blessed with goods on the promise that you will pay in the future, not that you have paid. And so, so the uh, the sacrificial system that God instituted with the the uh, the, the, the the moral law is uh, is called the ceremonial uh, laws and this and the cleansing. And all that whole system, um, knowing that man cannot keep the Ten Commandments, God knew that. God, God wasn't surprised. God wasn't, and God knew that by, uh, by keeping the law, will no one, not one human being, be justified. By keeping the law, would no one be justified? And so God wanted, but God knew that human beings don't know that. Even to today, even I hear some pastors say that we need to keep the Ten Commandments. We cannot get the blessings of God by not, if we do not keep the Ten And I look at these people and say, so have you kept the Ten Commandments? How many of it, how many do you have to break that uh, God uh, uh, would have to overlook if you have to meet the Ten Commandments? And God knew that we could not keep it. That's why Christ came. If God knew that one human being can keep the Ten Commandments, Christ would not have come. Christ would not have come. And so, so the 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 first element of the Mosaic uh, uh, law is the moral law. The second is the ceremonial laws, which are, includes the sacrificial system, and then the last is the festivals of the Lord. Where he has, uh, he God wants to fellowship with his people, and so uh, God instituted um, seven festivals uh, where the the people gather unto him to celebrate him, and he can can enjoy his people. And that, those are the three elements of the Messiah covenant that I know. Um, did I miss anything? 
Oh, well, yeah. Oh, now, you did the moral law. I was doing the obeying, keeping, and like you said, the sacrificial. You know, that's the ones I was thinking of. But you broke it down by the moral, is obeying the laws and stuff. So the ceremony and the sacrificial. So you gave the proper names. I didn't give the proper names. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. You know, I've never given the proper names. Before we, before, we, before, we, before we close, let me, let me uh, bring it to today's covenant real quickly. Go ahead and bring it to today's covenant. In today's covenant, the building is the, is the, is the church. The building of the stones, uh, the temple, um, of, of stone timber and, and precious um, stones. That is the people of God right now, the church of God. That is the, the correspondence. The Ark of the Covenant and the New Covenant uh, and, the, and the Old Covenant now are replaced by us being in Christ. Okay? We are in Christ uh, and, um, that, and Christ is the Ark. Right. Christ is the ark, right? We are in Christ. And um, the new covenant is the, is, the, is the new covenant in his blood. Um, the new covenant is, is and this is the, the, uh, the accomplishment of the promise of Abraham. Uh, the, um, the promise that says, by your seed, all of creation will be blessed. And, and that is the promise of righteousness by faith. Um, on the cross, Christ took our sins, all our wrongdoings, uh, past, present, and future. He paid for all the credit cards and, pay, uh, and prepaid all the rest of the credit cards till eternity. And um, in Christ is now the, uh, the mercy seat. When, when God sees us, he sees Christ. We are in Christ. And um, the new covenant uh, is the covenant uh, is, is, uh, is righteousness given to us uh, because uh, of believing in Christ and what Christ has done for us. If you believe in what Christ has done for you, you, uh, you, you have the new covenant and the new covenant is that that says, uh, I believe in God that justifies the ungodly. But in the new covenant, God justifies the ungodly. And this is Hebrews 8, 1 to 13. God justifies the ungodly. God washes away the sins of the ungodly, just like the burnt offerings used to do, but they were just covering. In this case, God washes the ungodly. And the, it's, the, it's the only reason... Um, that God could uh, could send His Spirit to us, that the the Holy Spirit can live in us and live in us everlasting. It's an everlasting promise. He would never leave us. Uh, once the Holy Spirit comes to reside in your heart, once you are in Christ, and in Christ, if you want to think of it this way, um, uh, when you when you anchor. When you cast uh, an anchor for the a ship, the ship is anchored to the bottom of the uh, of the ocean. That anchor, uh, that means the ship is anchored to the ground. The same thing when we are in Christ. That means uh, by faith uh, and by the Holy Spirit, we are anchored in 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 the holies of holies through the veil of, uh, of Christ's flesh into the presence of God. We are anchored. We are in Christ. And so, uh, and then the covenant that we have is the covenant that God calls us righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. God calls us righteous because we have accepted what Christ has done for us on the cross. So our covenant is, that's why Christ says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this wine, remember what I have done for you. Remember uh, uh, all the price that has been paid. Remember, remember that you are with righteousness. Remember that your, your sins are all remitted away. So that is a new covenant. Uh, so while Solomon was putting 
the Ten Commandments and the Ark of the Covenant in that temple, right. we in our in our temple in our body, um, we have um, the um, promise of God and the complete work of the cross in our heart, in our heart. And then the final thing is the temple of the Lord had the tangible presence of the Lord. Um, at, at, that, at that dedication, they had the presence of the Lord as a cloud, but they always had the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord didn't leave the temple until uh, Ezekiel, when the, temp the presence of the Lord left the temple. Um, but in our case, we have the Holy Spirit permanent in our hearts. We have the Holy Spirit permanent and he would not leave. He would not, not like the presence of the Lord left the temple in Ezekiel, um, uh, the final time, and the temple was uh, was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. Um, in that case, that was a physical stone timber building that was destroyed. Our temple, our, 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 our the presence of the Holy Spirit would not be taken from us. God is faithful, and He has promised, and He will do it. Mm -hmm. right. You always be with us. Praise God for that. Yeah. All right. It is 1222. We're going to go ahead and close out with prayer. Next week, we'll pick up with um, lesson three, which is Solomon seeks God's blessing. And we'll still be in first king. So let's go ahead and close out prayer prayers on the, the sheet. It says, our father, we thank you that you are the God of promises made and kept. We thank you for your presence with us through your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, we missed another day today.